Shabbat Shalom. Hi, everyone. I hope you're excited to be here tonight, because I know I am. Amen. And for those that are online around the world, we want to thank you for joining us here at Safe Haven Fellowship. And we, any, uh, anybody that uh, hasn't joined us before, we just want to thank you for coming, that the Lord put that on your heart. Before we get started, I'd like to open us in prayer. So if you uh, would join me. Heavenly Father, we just humbly come before you and thank you for your living word. And we thank you, for, Lord, for this gathering tonight. And we ask that the Holy Spirit would give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to understand your word tonight. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's exciting. I'm always excited when we get, come together. So we're, for this uh, week's Parsha, it is actually um, in Genesis chapter 6, verses 9 to chapter 11, verse 32 in Genesis. And um, it's entitled Noach. And this Parsha, I will be uh, looking at what is righteousness and why we are here. So that's what we're going to be covering. Um, just a quick reminder from last week's Parsha, um, we had Genesis 6 verses 5 through 8. I wanted to read that to remind you where we're going into this Parsha, because it's important. So I'm in Genesis 6, uh, chapter, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 through 8. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continuously. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, and from man to animal, to creeping things, to the birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. I love, I love that, that with everything that was going on, the Lord still wanted a relationship, and he was still looking for someone to have that relationship with him. So even though mankind was totally wicked, they, they totally were just in sin constantly. It says, it says here, every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously can you can you imagine that all your thoughts were were of sinful natures and it was all the time continuously non-stopping can you just imagine that so we think that um, you know some of us might think that we're living in evil times right now you know that with with people you know killing babies and and saying that it's okay that it, even if the baby is born that it still is okay to kill it you know we're, you know this this time is is very hard for us as believers because a lot of the things that are going on make us kind of feel like we're in the times of Noah don't you think I mean it's to the point where you know with the abortion it's like well they said the school education said well Girls are getting pregnant because they don't understand about sex. So let's bring it into the school system and teach boys and girls about sex. Well, that, that didn't solve the problem. So then they said, well, okay, that didn't solve the problem. We'll keep doing that, but now we're gonna add, we're gonna add um, birth control pills. And we're gonna give birth control pills to the girls and we're gonna give condoms to the boys. That'll solve the problem. And it didn't solve the problem. So then they said, well, let's just make it legal to have abortions. That'll solve the problem. That way, if they do get pregnant, we can take care of it. 
And all of that, all of that is trying to make sin okay. They're trying to say, we can do this, we can do that, and we can be in control. And, you know, God is grieved in his heart that people are killing babies that he knows in their womb. And so we need to make sure that, um, that we're doing all that we can do to tell the truth about that. And so that's my little soap opera on that. But I just, I just feel like, you know, it's not as bad as the time of Noah, but it, sometimes it kind of feels that way, right? I mean, they're even telling eight-year-old kids that they can choose, if they're born a boy, they can choose to be a girl, or if they're born a girl, they can choose to be a boy. I mean, it's just craziness. And, but it's all about sin. It's all about selfishness. It's all about taking God out of the picture and trying to put man in the picture. I mean, on that same topic, it's like, you know, man that says, you know, we don't even need God now to have children. We can just take the egg from the woman, we can take the sperm from the man, and we can put it together, and we can put it in the woman, and now we can be God. We can, we can be in charge of, of birth. But the thing is, is all these things are leading to selfish and sin, and none of it is for the abundant life that God wants us to have. Because God has put everything in place. He created everything for his glory. And so the fact that we see in that that um, God was grieved in his heart. Now, when the Bible talks about the heart, it's talking about your being, who you are, and your, your soul is, is the heart. And so that's what it's always referring to, is, is who we are. And so for God to be grieved in his heart, I mean, just the thought of that makes me sad. I don't know about you, but to think that, that what I say and do can affect God, the creator of the heavens and earth, that he loves me that much that he would be grieved by my sin. I, I don't know about you, but that, that makes me sad. Because I, I see him as my Abba Father. I see him as someone that I want him to say, Ron, I'm proud of you. Ron, I like what you're doing, you know? I want to get that data boy from God. And the thought of grieving him by my sinful actions, my behavior, it, it, it strikes, it hurts me. And I know that it hurts the Father. So, um, also, the one thing I want to talk about, too, was that um, it said, in, it also said, for I am sorry that I have made them. I mean, for those out there that are parents, you know, and your child was born, the thought that you could ever think of, I, I'm sorry that I even created them, I mean, that's got to be pretty bad because we all know as parents and grandparents how much we love our children and how much they're a part of who we are and who we, you know, that love that we have for them. And so the thought of, of God being sorry that he even created mankind, that, that just grieves my heart, right? But the good news is, in verse 8, it says, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. There is our hope. There is our mercy. There is our grace. That is who God is. God is constantly wanting to have a relationship with each and every one of us. And it doesn't matter if we mess up. He's there for us to, to turn away from our sin and to turn back to him. No matter where you're at, no matter how far you have gone off the path and away from God, he's constantly, constantly looking for you to come back to him. And that's the same thing that this tells us right here is that God, even though he was ready to wipe out the whole earth and start over again, he was still looking for someone who wanted to have a relationship with him. 
And even today, he's still looking for people to have a relationship with him. So that's pretty exciting, I think, right? So now, now that you get that background, let's go into the parsha. So the parsha starts off in Genesis 6, verse 9, and what it says is, these are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah walked with God. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first heard the word righteous, that Noah was a righteous man, I had this idea of like, well, what is righteous? What, how does that look? Was Noah like this perfect guy? Did like Noah like do everything right? Did he have it all together? No, no, Noah, Noah didn't have it all together. Noah was in the flesh. He made mistakes. But the thing is, Noah wanted a relationship with God. During this time, right, everybody else was just doing their own thing. Whatever they wanted to do, they were doing. They didn't care about God. They just like, whatever I, my flesh wants, I'm going to do. And it's constantly selfish, selfish, selfish. But Noah was saying, no, I want to have a relationship with God. I want to walk with God. I want to be blameless in his sight. So when you think about where it was, it wasn't too hard not to to be as bad as that, right? Because it says their every intent of their thoughts in their heart was only evil continuously, nonstop. So it's not too hard to be righteous when you're compared to that, right? But the thing is, is you know what what is what is righteousness? You know, we have our ideas of what it is. Well, the the, the rabbis, they tell us that righteousness is one who honors God and orders his life in all things according to his will. That's what the rabbis say is. So let's break that down. It says, it says, one who honors God. Well, what is honor? How does one honor God? How do you honor God? How do I honor God, right? Well, the, the dictionary says to honor someone is to show high respect and great esteem. Do you have that kind of relationship with God? Do you hold God in high respect? Do you, do you hold him in esteem? I know a lot of people out there have their sports fans that they they just think they walk on water. I know there's a lot of people out there that have their their rock stars that they hold in high esteem. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about do you see God as the creator of the heavens and, and the earth? And do you respect who he is? To the point that you're willing to do what he's asking you to do, what he's calling you to do, right? Do you desire to give that honor to God? Is that in your heart, right? So it also talks about, you know, how do you show that esteem to God? And, you know, do you do it with your time? Do you do it with your money? Do you honor God in your family, at work, at the store? You know, what, what do you watch on TV? What are you watching on your computers? Are you bringing honor to God in those activities? I think that's one of the ways that we can honor God is how we live our lives and what we see as important to do. So, it also says a righteous person orders their lives with a purpose. When you make decisions like where you're going to work, who you're going to marry, who you're going to have relationships with, 
Who are you going to um, interact with? You know, all these, all these things. How are you going to spend your money? All these things is, as you're looking at it is, what does God want me to do to have an abundant life? Like every decision, because God does care about every aspect of your life. He, he cares about everything that you do. He cares about what you do with your time, what you do with your money, what you do in your relationships. All that matters to him. And if you get in the habit of thinking, okay, is, is this path that I'm on, is it the decisions I'm making, are they leading to a closer relationship to God? Or are they leading to a path that I'm wanting to be on for my selfish reasons, for my sinful reasons, right? So you've always got to be thinking about what I do, what I say, what I think. Is it honoring God? And is it on the path that God has, has made for me? And we all know that God's word says that he has a purpose and plan for each and every one of us. And so if you keep that in mind when you're making decisions, you'll stay on that path and God will use you for what you were created for. When we get into trouble, and I, and I know for myself, is I make a decision just based on my will, my thoughts, my process. And the thing is, Am I doing that for God or am I doing that for me? And, th and that's the thing. The choices you make, you know, young kids get out of high school and they're deciding, do I go to college? Do I, do I go learn a trade? Do I go in the military? Like they have to make these decisions and they, when they make these decisions, are they asking God what his will is? What does God want from them? Because he has a purpose and plan for you. Where we mess up is when we start to think, I know what my purpose and plan is. I know what God wants without even checking into him. So, you know, it says also, it talks about God's will. Like, order in life with a purpose in all, in all areas. And then wanting to be in God's will in all things according to his will. That's what righteousness is about. Righteousness isn't about you being holier than thou. It's not about you having it all together. It's about you wanting to make decisions that will please your Abba Father. It's about knowing and asking God, what should I do in this situation? And looking to him and not figuring out you have it all figured out. Every time I mess up and I have to repent, it's because I didn't ask God for it. It's because I thought I had the answer. I thought I knew what I was doing and never even checked in with God. And it always turns out not to be that good. But every time that I ask God first and I get his answer and I get his input, my life is on the right path. So I just want to share that with you guys. So that's the kind of righteousness that we're talking about. All right? So... So my brothers and sisters, that is why Noah was called a righteous man. Now, do I believe that we can live a righteous life? I think we can with the Holy Spirit. I think we can if we get in the habit of asking God first about all decisions of our life, because God cares about every decision you make. And that reminds me of Renee and I just last weekend went to Ohio for a wedding. And this young lady, Tamar, is in her young, early 30s. And the first time Renee and I met her, she just like, the love of the Lord just comes out of her. You know, and she, she, she could be like a model, right? She is like, she, but you know, it's not her looks that makes her special. It's the love of the Lord that's in her, right? How she loves the Lord more than anything. 
and how she constantly asked the Lord for direction. Well, she decided, you know, hey, I want to get married. I want to have a family. That's what I want. But I don't know if that's God's will. So I'm just going to take it one step, step of faith, one time at a time, right? But in case it is God's will for me to have a husband, I'm going to keep myself as a pure bride. I'm going to save myself for whatever man God brings in my life to be my husband, if that's God's will. Now, that's, that's a big faith. Not knowing if she, she might stay single for her whole life or she might get married. But she said, if God wants to give me the desire of my heart, I want to be a pure bride for my husband. And what's very interesting about the story is that when her and her husband, his name is Sean, when they when they uh, met and they fell in love and and they uh, decided to get married, they wanted to honor God in their relationship through that whole courting period. And so when they finally got married and they had, you know, I now pronounce you man and wife, you may kiss the bride. That was the first time that they had ever kissed. Isn't that an amazing story? I mean, especially in today's culture, that someone wants to be righteous, wants to be in God's will, that, that would be willing to take that step of, step of faith. So that, for me, is a testimony that we can do it. We can do what God is asking us to do with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I just love that story. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it spoke to me. And... I, I hope that God continues to bless them and, and, and make them fruitful and multiply <laughs> because their love for the Lord is so great that I just know that God has a plan for them. They both individually were doing great things for the Lord, but I know now that God has put them together, there's something even more amazing that's going to happen. So let's take that as an encouragement. All right. So I also, so we understand now what, what I'm talking about when I talk about righteousness, right? You got that? Okay. So, and we also know that it was in the time that Noah was that compared to society and culture, he was blameless compared to them, right? Well, you know, some of us might feel that way too, compared to what's going out there. We might feel that way that we're blameless, but that's not the point of that whole scripture. The point is that we desire to walk with God. That's what makes us righteous. And through the blood of Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah, we've covered and our sins are forgiven. We can walk that, just like the song that we were singing. Because of His sacrifice, we can walk in righteousness with God. Amen? Amen. Not, not for anything that we, we do. All right. So I just want to finish up one last thing. There's this book called With One Voice, Messianic Jewish Torah Commentaries. And it's, it's Messianic Jewish believers that they have read this scripture and then they give their commentary. And I was reading for this parsha, and it, you know, I told you it, it covers all the way to um, to chapter eleven, verse thirty-two. Well, he wrote it on um, Genesis chapter nine, verse one, which is God bless Noah and his sons, and said to them. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And what he said here is, you know, what are we doing here on earth? What is our main purpose in life? Who are we? So he believes that Genesis frame, framework our sense of identity and calling. And he, he justifies that because he says, just like Adam and Eve, the first human beings created, God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. That was the first instruction God gave to the human being. And then after 
He did the reset through the flood. What did he do? He did the same thing with Noah and his sons and, and said, be, be fruitful and multiply. Now, in just a basic form, you might think, well, God just wanted to just fill the earth with human beings again, right? But when um, David weaned from Richmond, Virginia, what he brings up is the fact that it's much more than that. And he gives us five things that God is really saying to us and, and saying to us as believers right now. Number one, we are here to bring the knowledge and love of God throughout the whole earth. Not just to populate the whole earth, but bring that love of God through the whole earth. Everywhere we go, we're supposed to bring the love of God. And number two is bring all things in creation under God. So everything, our money, our house, our cars, our job, everything should bring it under God. God's domination. Like, we should submit it all. And the third thing is, you know, God, with Adam and Eve, and he created the garden, he told them, what did he say? He said, you know, take care of it. Right? Well, he said the same thing for us today. We're supposed, everything that God has created, the animals, the trees, the environment, everything, we're supposed to be working with God to cherish it, to, to acknowledge that all life is important. Humans, animals, all of it. Because God created it, and when God created, it is good. So we need to work with God to keep it that way, right? And the last thing is, oh, and then number four is, reflect his goodness and compassion because we are his image bearers of God. In the very beginning, he says, let us create man in our image. So we're supposed to be in his word, and we're supposed to be doing what he does and what he wants us to do. And so that leads to the last thing. It says, reflect God's action in our actions. So that, that means like resting on the Sabbath. God rested on the Sabbath. We should rest on the Sabbath. God has shown mankind mercy and grace. We should show others mercy and grace. So our lives and who we are has a purpose. And just that is just the basic. But individually, God has a lot of great things planned for each and every one of us. If we're willing to to ask him what his will is before we make a decision, before we move, before we stay, before anything. We should always ask God, is this in your will? Is this part of your plan for my life? That's the question we should always be asking. So I want to leave you with this one last, well, two things in the scripture. One, in Psalms 1, 6, it says, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. God knows the righteous. He knows the things that you're doing right. Okay? And then he says, but here's the warning, but the way of the wicked will perish. And that's where we, get, we see in the flood. So he knows your heart. Right? And then the last thing I want to share with you was in Acts chapter 26. This is talking about Saul and his encounter with Yeshua, Jesus. And, you know, we also know him as Paul. It says in verse 15, And I said, this is Paul, Saul speaking, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, Yeshua, whom you are persecuting. Everything that we do and say that is sinful and against Jesus, Yeshua, against God, we are basically persecuting him. 
There's verse 16. But get up and stand on your feet. For the purpose I have appeared to you to anoint you a minister and a witness, not only to the things which you have seen, but also the things which I will appear to you. God is saying the same thing for each one of us. He's saying, I know where you've been. I know your past, but get up, get up. It's time to turn around and follow me. Right? Stand proud. You're now, you're my child of God. Right? Just like he said to Paul, he's saying to us, stand up. All right? And then he promises not just the things that we see, but the things that we do by step of faith. There's, there's things that God's going to show us by faith that we would never imagine on our own. So take heart. Take hope. Then he said in verse 17, I will rescue you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you. So have, fear, have no fear. God's in control. If he's asking you to do something, if he's saying go out here, go there, don't let fear. Be like David with Goliath. Stand your ground. Believe, know who your God is. Greater is my God than your giants. Right? Amen. Okay. And the last thing he says, why all this is coming about, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. That is our marching orders from Yeshua, Jesus, right? Our, our purpose is to bring people from darkness to light. Our purpose is to tell people the truth about how God loves them and that they don't have to stay in the dungeon. They don't have to stay in the pit. That God has the power to bring them out, to stand them on their feet, and to set him on the course that he had planned for all his life for that person. Because the word says that while they were in their mother's room, God knew them. So God created them for a purpose and a plan. And sometimes we make our own decisions what leads us down to a bad path away from God. But God says, hey, what I've done in your life, I want you to share it with people. I want you to tell them what I did for you. That there is hope. There is forgiveness. There is pure and perfect love. And that I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's Yeshua. That's Jesus. So if not anything else tonight, I hope you put that in your heart. That you do have a purpose. You do have a plan. And that God wants you to share that with those in need. So it's not just about being fruitful, multiplying. It's about taking the word, the good news around the world. So with that, I say Shabbat Shalom. Good night. Shabbat Shalom.